child standing may be a good alternative for those children who are growing older and are starting toilet learning. So with that, I would like you to have the right supplies available to you. So things you're gonna need would be one, I think a step stool is nice just for your comfort to try to be off the floor, but yet you're at the child's level. So you might find sitting on a step stool works well and you might have one in the bathroom anyway. Um, another thing you're gonna need is obviously a diaper, a clean one, a <laughs> clean diaper or pull up. You also are gonna need wipes. You're gonna need well, I would like you to use gloves. They're not required, but recommended, so to have gloves available to you. Having an extra plastic bag is nice just for soiled clothing. You might find you need it, so that's something that you would have available to you. The other thing that I found could be helpful would be clothespins. Um, just that helps keep the child's clothing out of the way if you need to, just so that it's less chance that that would get contaminated. I do have wood ones here. Wood isn't ideal. Um, plastic would be better just because you can wash them um, and disinfect them, but wood is something that can work and you might just have to throw it away if it becomes soiled. And then for garbages, the things that I want you to just be mindful of is that it needs to be covered and it needs to be separate. So whether you, depending on what you can use or what you have available to you, but you need a covered garbage would be one choice. And then this would be foot operated that you can do if you're seated on the step stool works great. Um, so that's one thing. Or if you don't have that available to you, then another thing would be a 3M hook. I've done many times, either on the wall or on the bathroom stall. And then you can hang a plastic bag on there and then put all your soiled items and then tie it off and then you're able to put it in another covered garbage. So that's some, another option. It's just better to have it off the floor than having it on the floor. But the other thing that you need to always have as a separate garbage would be an uncovered garbage that is used just for hand washing. Because sometimes I see where the one garbage is covered and they're doing the hand washing and the diapering and children are shoving their hands into soiled material. So we always want to make sure that you have the two separate garbages always available. Now I'm going to show you the standing diapering procedure. First of all, I think about is the clothing. So how we can keep the clothing out of the way of you changing the diaper, the pull up. The child can help you is one way because then you know where their hands are. So that's always handy so that they're not exploring themselves or getting into things while you're trying to change their diaper or their pull up. So you can have them help you by holding, like with this little sweetheart, she's wearing a dress. She can hold the front of her dress for you or if they have a t-shirt, they can hold the shirt or sweatshirt out of the way. Um, that could be something that they do. But if they're not compliant or they don't want to help you, the other thing that you can use are clothespins. I found that those are very helpful. Um, so you can just take those like I described before. Um, you can keep that the clothing out of the way those work great so just to try to help so that it's less material that could get contaminated so the next thing that you want to make sure is that you have everything available to you get your wipes out just like you would a normal diaper changing procedure and you're going to need three every single time so just know that you have that because even if they're just wet i want you to use three um, if they're poopy, you might notice that you don't know how many wipes that you need, so always have those available and have, already have, have it open so that you're not having to contaminate the container. And if you're able to lay those somewhere, you know, nearby, you can definitely do that. Otherwise, you might just have to lay them right on top of the, the wipe container themselves just because you don't have any other place to go if you're doing it on the floor of a bathroom with just bathroom stalls. You're not going to have a shelf or a countertop available to you. Okay. The next thing I would like you to get out would be the gloves. And like I said, they're not required, but they are recommended. So you can put your gloves on. Once you have your gloves on, then this is where you can remove the, the pull-up or the diaper. Now, obviously with pull-ups, they're going to be something that I would prefer you're not going to pull down the legs because if they are soiled either with urine or poop, you don't want to have those germs transferring down their legs. So it, that would be better if you just um, take them and to take them off on the sides just like you would um, if they were lying down. And then you want to make sure that you get that soil pull up and then you could put that in the garbage. The next thing that I would have you do then would be the wipe. 
so that you'd want to wipe the child whenever it's soiled and it was on their skin it's the same thing and their skin could either get um, can, um, a rash from it and we want to make sure that their skin stays rash free and also so they smell better so it's still recommended to use a wipe even if they're wet so sweetheart and obviously be telling the child what you're doing to this whole time so that they know so honey i'm going to wipe your bottom but it's going to feel cold and you always want to wipe if you can from front to back especially for little girls so that you're not introducing any poop that could be there into their urethra and then they could get a bladder infection. So to wipe there and then to wipe to make sure that you're wiping the back too if they're poopy. So after you've disposed of the dirty diaper and wipe the bottom, then you need to make sure you take your gloves off. So when you take your gloves off, you want to make sure you're grabbing all glove and you don't want to scoop underneath your glove because then you're going to get poop germs or germs on your hands. So you want to make sure that you grab all gloves and this hand's clean so then I can go underneath my glove and then it turns inside out and then you can dispose of that in there. So this would be the time that you have bare hands, whether you were wearing gloves or not, that you need to make sure you wipe them with a wipe. And so that's where the next wipe would be for you because you want to make sure that you get off any germs that could be potentially on your hands. Whether or not you wore the gloves, you still could have hands or germs on your hands. So you want to make sure that that is done. If the child's hands were always in a place where you knew where they were, if they're always hanging under their clothes and they're not moving around and they're not exploring themselves, then you don't need to wipe their hands. But if they, when you find that they are digging in places that you don't want them to be or touching themselves, this would be a time where you'd want to wipe their hands as well. So I would take another wipe here. But basically, you want to make sure that all the wipes are used before you would go ahead and touch a clean pull-up or a clean diaper. So then I'm going to now assume that she did not touch herself. So then that's where I did not wipe her hands. Um, but then that's where you want to make sure that you would put on the clean pull-up or the clean diaper. So you just put that on a little sweetheart. Hello, honey. If you'll just help me out there. And obviously this gets to be sometimes a little tricky, but once you get used to it, it gets easier to make sure that you get their cat or their diaper on or their pull up. And then always, I'm sure you guys do do this, is check the back just to make sure that you got their little tushy covered. Um, but sometimes when you're doing things from the front, you can't always see what's going on in the back. So at least check that to make sure that that is done. And then of course you would take off these to get her all ready and get her dressed down. <laughs> And then you would go ahead and you'd go wash hands together. So that's where we want her hands washed. Um, if you find that if they, before you get their clean pull up or their diaper on, that they feel like they wanted to go to the bathroom themselves and try, there's nothing wrong with them getting to do that before you put on their clean pull up or their clean diaper because you've still wiped their bottom and you've gotten all the germs off their skin, but then having them sit on the toilet and they might find that they do go a little bit more and that's fine. They might find that they don't, but then they can just use toilet paper just like normal because that's what's normal in your toilet learning so that you go ahead and you wipe your bottom with that and then they can flush. But if they don't want to do that option, then they, you can just do the standing procedure and they don't have to sit on the toilet, but just know it's okay if they do sit on the toilet that you can do that. So if you are deciding or if you or your program decides that you want to try to have more self-help skills with the child or try to incorporate that more into toilet learning, then what I need you to think about are just ways that you're going to do that in a sanitary manner. So obviously with the time that you watched me, I did everything for the child. But if you want to have the child either put on their pull-up by themselves or get dressed by themselves, then that is something where you need to think about how to do that in a sanitary manner. So you need to put a barrier on the floor. So one thing that I have found that works great is a towel. You can put the towel on the floor and then have the child sit on the floor, obviously, and then you can give them their pull-up to put on or their clothing to put on. And then there's that way we're protecting the floor 
from getting germs on the child and we're also protecting from getting the child's bare bottom germs on the floor. Because if that were to happen, have a bare bottom on the floor, then we need to disinfect the floor. So that is something to always think about. The other thing to remember is whatever barrier that you're using, it needs to be a separate one for every child. So you cannot use the same towel for all the children as they're going through to dress themselves just because then they'll have um, share the same surface for their bare bottoms and that's not recommended to do. So we need to make sure that after every towel, you get a new towel down. If you don't wanna to use towels, the other thing that you could use would be paper barrier. So you can use paper towels. You just wanna make sure if you can to give them a fairly large section, if you can, um, of paper towel to sit down at sit down on so that they're not less chance that their little bottom is going to be on the floor. Other barrier options would be a nap mat or a changing pad. Like I said, if you want them to do some self-help skills, the best thing that you can do is by at least putting down a barrier um, that's separate and that um, for each child and then maintaining that. And if their bare bottom ever did get on the floor, um, then that is something just to remember that it's recommended to dis disinfect the floor just so that we're preventing germs from getting tracked throughout your classroom or throughout your home. Mm -hmm.